Hello everyone. Uh, this time I want to talk about the notion of cultured meat, or at least that's what the industry prefers to call it. This is basically meat that's grown in a lab setting. It's, it doesn't come from an animal. Uh, it never was part of an animal. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that uh, I can see there be a lot of people with some sort of wingnutty objection to this. Uh, they'll have some obje objection along the lines of, it's not a natural product, so it can't be good for you. Uh, or, uh, if God meant us to do this, yada, yada, yada. Uh, there, there's going to be some wingnut type objections to it. But I think in the long term, this is the way to go for meat production. Uh, it eliminates a lot of the headaches we currently have with meat production. And those are managing the animals uh, and getting them to market and dealing with the slaughter and doing all of this in a semi-humane way. Uh, and now I'm not saying that the slaughtering of the animals for food is necessarily uh, morally objectionable. Humans are carnivorous. We're omnivores. And we are uh, most easily uh, fed properly with a combination of meat and vegetables. So uh, it's, not, uh, it's not something I have a moral objection to, the uh, slaughter of the animals for food. But that doesn't mean we need to treat them poorly from the time that they are born to when they do get slaughtered. And there's, that doesn't mean we have to slaughter them in a way that is excessively painful or something like that. That said, if we could come up with a way of having our meat without having to kill animals to get it, I would actually be behind that notion because Quite frankly, I, I think we'd be better off, uh, given the volume of meat that we need to support the demand, I think we'd be far better off if we could grow it in a purely industrial lab setting. Uh, that, that would mean we wouldn't have to have massive tracts of land uh, put into service for ranching. We wouldn't need uh, a huge amount of feed to feed these animals. So anything where we're growing, uh, say, grain to feed animals, we could repurpose that grain to feed people. Or we could repurpose that grain or whatever we're growing there to uh, fuel uh, or whatever else we, we can imagine that we can generate from that land. And marginal land could be allowed to go back to nature, uh, let the forests return, let... Uh, let the prairie grasses return, uh, you know, let, let the marginal land uh, go back to its natural state and let the natural animals graze it and so on. Now, that's not to say that we, we would necessarily have to do, uh, we could necessarily just uh, walk away from the land and, that we've been producing stuff on that's been managed for so long and just expect it to go back to nature. That won't happen. But we can certainly manage it back to an ecologically stable situation. And that would certainly be good. And if, if we do that, if we can reduce the human footprint on the planet, we'll reduce the conflict uh, interfaces where, uh, where humans and wild animals conflict. We could increase the habitat areas for endangered species, or even non-endangered species. You know, if we we could ex we could let the boreal forests recover. We could uh, we could let the grasslands recover. It's it'd be uh, it'd be really good long term. We could even let uh, areas in the rainforests and so on recover, although that would take a lot longer, given that it is marginal land in a lot of cases. But there are other advantages, though. Uh, 
producing the animals the traditional way, ranching, we have a lot of greenhouse gas emissions and other pollution. It's hard on the water supply. It, uh, you get methane and that sort of thing in the air. And you have to transport the animals to slaughter and all of that. If we can avoid that, we can uh, dramatically reduce the greenhouse gas impact and the pollution footprint of meat production. And I think that would be really good. Uh, I'm all for cleaner air, cleaner water, uh, less, less pollution. Uh, that is always going to be a net win if we can have a lower impact on our environment. And it would get us closer to that ideal zero emissions uh, notion, which uh, I don't think is going to ever actually happen, but we can get a lot closer to it, and I think that would be absolutely brilliant if we could. There's, the other, there's also another advantage where uh, we can make sure that the meat itself is safe, that it's not got diseases in it, uh, things like mad cow disease wouldn't have to be there because there wouldn't be brain tissue at all to get contaminated into the meat. Uh, we could make it all the part of the, the meat that we like to eat. Uh, we can make sure it's all the stuff we like. And we can also make sure that it's uh, nutritionally better for us. That it, uh, it's not going to need the antibiotics to deal with disease. It's not going to have, have all of that. That's not to say we won't have uh, potential chemical contaminants as a result of the uh, lab process. So we'll have to be careful on that front to make sure that in the process of growing our meat artificially, we don't actually add additional problems to our food supply that weren't there before. Or make sure at least that if we do have to add something to it, that the trade-off is a net win. Uh, for example, of a net win trade-off, vaccines are not 100% bulletproof. Uh, there is the odd person that reacts badly to them. Yet, on the balance, they save vastly more lives than they harm. So, vaccines are a very good uh, risk uh, assessment. Uh, they, they don't... Uh, the... the the upsides far outweigh the downsides. And we need to make sure that whatever we do with this cultured meat, we don't end up creating something where the downsides outweigh the upsides. Now, I don't know uh, what this uh, cultured meat's gonna taste like, and uh, it's, it's probably not gonna taste like beef or pork or whatever, it might. Uh, we could certainly uh, uh, work on uh, making it uh, a taste like particular types of meat. Uh, that's a, a something that we can work on over time. But in a lot of cases, it doesn't really matter what the meat tastes like. People happily eat it anyway, as long as it tastes like meat, uh, whatever that means. I think a lot of it is the texture. And as long as we can keep the texture right, uh, people will be generally happy with it. Now, it would be a pretty substantial paradigm shift in the uh, in the meat production world. Uh, you know, you could you'd have a job where you went down to the meat farm, which would be could be uh, several uh, floors in a high rise, and that would certainly change things. Uh, uh, and that would uh, probably be the first step in. Uh, in eliminating uh, dirt-based uh, agriculture, sprawl-based agriculture. Uh, if we, uh, if we uh, take uh, the ranching aspect out of it and turn that into a, an industrial factory setting, then I, I think people get used to that notion and would probably get more toward the, the same idea for growing other nutritional uh, substances, uh, plant-based ones, without actually using the plants themselves. But I think that'll be a harder problem to crack. And uh, we're still going to need the same inputs to make the plants work. So I'm not sure that that will be as much of a win environmentally 
as uh, getting meat production into factories. Uh, then again, it might be. Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I'm sure we'll go there eventually. We'll need to have something like that when we try to colonize space anyway. Uh, and uh, this meat production in a lab, I think, uh, would be the, a really good first step in that direction as well, since it would allow us to have meat for our, our astronauts and explorers and colonists on other worlds before a, an ecosystem that supports ranching could be established. On the whole, I think the uh, notion of cultured meat, lab-grown meat, is something we should explore further. And we should make sure that the NIMBY factions don't totally kibosh the, the entire uh, idea. Uh, obviously, if it smells bad or something as a result of the production, I don't want that in my backyard either. But if we can at all make it palatable to have nearby. I'm all for having a, a meat lab uh, a mile from my house or a quarter mile from my house. Actually, as it stands right now, I do have a, a, a natural meat lab a mile from my house. Uh, so uh, when you get down to it, uh, it uh, it's no different than having, than having that farm a mile or two from your house, you know, when you get outside the city limit, uh, you know. But uh, I'm actually all for it, and I'm hoping that uh, once this ramps up and actually becomes industrially viable, and I'm pretty sure it's going to, I'm, I'm really hoping that NIMBY and the bureaucrats and so on don't completely kibosh it before it can get off the ground. And that's a big problem with our modern society uh, when it, anything new is coming along. So I really hope that doesn't happen. Anyway, uh, my basic conclusion, uh, lab grow meat seems like a good idea. Uh, let's make sure we do it right and let's get it off the ground. Uh, that's all I have to say on this uh, topic. Uh, if you have suggestions for future videos, uh, let me know. Uh, if you've watched this far, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.